Greetings, my name is Jesse. This is my YouTube channel. The discussion today is going to be a very serious discussion for many people. And I want you to understand that even though it may be difficult to deal with these issues, it is best that we deal with them so we can go on and live a seemingly normal life. Are we going to be perfect? We'll never be perfect. However, we can get to a point in our life <clears throat> where we are free of pain. So let us begin this conversation. I'm going to bring up my notes because it helps me to be organized, to stay functioned, to stay focused on what it is I want to speak on. Oh, excuse me. I'm, I know I'm trying to do something. Here we go. Aha. Exactly where I want to be. All right. So. I will begin by scrolling up to the top of the notes because I had some things that I wanted to say beforehand. First of all, I have come to the conclusion that life is about having fun. I think that's where we fail. When we were children, we knew how to have fun. Then we came, became adults with responsibilities and got the impression that all we're supposed to do is be responsible. And we are supposed to be responsible. We're supposed to work, provide for ourselves, and provide for our families. Let's, let me begin. In life, all of us struggle, all of us have an internal struggle. This struggle can be right here, and I'm gonna put it in there because that's just bad form, right here should be, can be led by anxiety, depression, or both. One source of our struggle is that we forgot how to incorporate fun in our lives and our bored and boredom is leading to depression. That's one of my principal theories right now that a lot of modern depression is it has to do, and I'll be drinking a beverage so I don't cough. <clears throat> For some reason when I talk, I cough. Okay. I was saying modern day depression is because we've forgotten how to have fun. Now, there's serious pain and suffering. And this is a discussion about PTSD, whether the source is being having experienced rape, having been through combat, or having experienced child abuse or other forms of trauma. And here's where I have to stop. A long time ago, I wrote an article, and the article was on fear of fear. And this happens. We don't want to deal with it because the pain that comes from it immediately makes us afraid and that fear compounds the pain even more. So <coughs> as you are watching this video and I hope you watch it till the end, when you start to fear, feel that fear of fear, overwhelmed emotionally, it's too much to deal with. Just stop and practice relaxation exercises, which is nothing more than breathing. And I'm going to stop now and then and remind people who have experienced severe trauma and are watching this video that they need to relax when they're getting to that point of becoming overwhelmed. You, you can. I will tell you 100% confidence that you can start healing yourself by changing your negativities to your positive. And people will argue with me. I've had people argue with me. Who have come back from the military and who say that I don't understand. Could it be possible that when we are hurting, we're vulnerable and we're not the best judge of information? Maybe somebody does understand and has something to offer. Let me continue. <clears throat> as I said, we could, have, we could have experienced severe trauma such as rape, child abuse, and more. I can tell you there is reason to believe in a day and life where we are free from pain and suffering. My admonition is to not feel offended. That's another thing. Some people will just automatically say, this fool, this idiot, this dummy doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. What I am engaged in right now is a scientific conversation focusing on what I have learned in my writings and meditations. For the most part, we are our own worst enemies with our negative thoughts. And that's the principal thing. 
<laughs> and as long as I'm here, let me just go through this list here because this, this list is actually going to help me. I have said that we are supposed to have fun. And when you have experienced serious trauma and you're going through everything, the depression, the anxiety, the pain, the rage, the anger, the unorganized thoughts where you're thinking of harming other people, okay, it's difficult to believe, to even consider the fact that there may be some kind of solution, remedy, okay? <clears throat> I was going to talk about talk about having fun let's go talk about the god factor we are basically toasters and we were made to toast bread and what i mean by that and people don't like it is that <clears throat> god made us to fulfill certain functions he wants us to have friends he wants us to be involved in our family he wants us to have a spouse he wants us to be a parent he wants us to be part of his life and talk to people about him so he's made us to function in certain ways. And when we are not engaged in what God has made us to function in, then we're, <coughs> we're going to be engaged in turmoil. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. When you have considered having fun, and you may even think that God exists, and he may have made you for a purpose, and you want to start on the journey of freeing yourself from your pain and suffering. You can free yourself from your own pain and suffering. This is what I tell people, and I know it works. When you when you get to that point of overwhelming emotions, <coughs> excuse me again, you can practice basic relaxation exercises. And somebody should teach me how to write. Let's see if I can get it this way. I want to be as precise as possible. Again, it does what it wants to. Okay, I want to add an S to it. Okay. And that's important. For the most part, people can have an inner conversation when they're alone and meditate on what challenges they have and come to some conclusions, set some goals, some objectives, <coughs> work on them accomplish them and everything is great for some people it is hard it, it is hard to think and you got to start right here and from relaxation exercises you go to emotional management now because i know that if you have spent 10 years trying to get over a rape incident or coming back from combat or having suffered child abuse it's going to be difficult so what i want to do is I want to jump in straight into cognitive restructuring, which is thinking positive, basic, basically <clears throat> positive psychology. I always cough. There's a character in the Bible who who talks about having been, um, excuse me, I forgot my hat. I don't feel spiritual without my hat. Okay. So... <clears throat> the Bible character talks about how he has been, uh, some demon has been assigned to torture him through life. Um, and Paul seems to think that it's some kind of a, a balance, that God wants him to stay meek and humble and not fly off to the sun. But I always cough and I, I attribute it to that. But getting to cognitive destruction, thinking positive, I know. I read in the articles. I got the bachelor's degree in psychology. I took actual psychology courses in my psychology degree program. <clears throat> and I say that because there's people who's graduated with the associates in psychology and maybe in a bachelor's in psychology, and they just took work wacko courses that have nothing to do with nothing. So cognitive restructuring. It's basically saying, I'm no longer going to go around saying everything sucks, nothing works, why should I bother? I am now going to start looking at what's good in life. And I'm going to incorporate fun and enjoy my life. And I'm going to be optimistic. And I'm going to be hopeful. And I'm going to be realistic. What is the realistic part? The realistic part is, I hear this a lot, I have nothing in life. Well, you have a home. 
and you have meals, and you have a television, and you have a radio, and you have a computer, pen and pencil. There's things that friends, you have family members. Maybe you don't get along with your family members, and maybe that's appropriate because sometimes family can actually be a negative. But to go around saying you have nothing is wrong. <clears throat> and the realistic part is to be grateful for what you have and enjoy it. If you have a bicycle, why is it gathering dust? Go out on a bike ride. You know, watch, and this is an admonition, watch healthy television programs. Listen to healthy music, okay? And that's what we need to do. We need to become optimistic because we believe in ourselves. It means right here, we can think, organize, plan, and act. Now let me stop to here again. You're considering some of the worst things that have happened to you in your life. And it is hard because the pain and suffering automatically surfaces. Just relax. Taking a couple of deep breaths. And just relax. Don't think. Don't feel. Just relax. Mellow out. You know, you don't need drugs. You don't need alcohol. You need yourself. And you are empowered. You can change your thoughts. And you can do relaxation exercises. And when you're calm, then you can consider the information, the, first, the other information here. I already talked about friends. You know, there's a lot that life has. You know, good meals. That's one of the ways I celebrate. I celebrate with good meals. I like good music. You know, I, I don't read as much as I used to read. And I think that has a lot to do with the university experience. But I do like comedy, and to some extent, I guess I like romance as long as it's at a distance in a movie. Um, I used to like to be outside walking, doing. I mean, as a young person, I used to play football, basketball. You know, we weren't, we weren't much for baseball, but as a young person, we used to do everything. And this here is important. You know, you 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 start believing in yourself. When your thoughts, the ability to organize information and make plans, set goals and objectives, and then put those goals and objectives in, in, in action. And as you're doing, <coughs> excuse me, as you're doing this and as you're doing that, you start to grow in confidence and your self esteem improves. I should have put, I'm going to write it in there right now. Let me see here. Self, and it's two words self esteem will. Oops. Will improve, and, and and as long as it's on my mind, I hear a lot of people laughing at um, giving every child a trophy, giving every child a a participation, participation, whatever, a ribbon for part participating, and you got to understand one thing is you're messing with the psyche of children. See, the old system was just fine for children. Even though it didn't work out the way, you know, it, 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 if a child was competing for something and it didn't work out the way they wanted it, and they had a complete emotional breakdown, children are resilient and they move on. But some of the reason children are resilient and can process emotional trauma a whole lot better than adults and adults are screwing in their emotional growth with this foolishness that everybody needs a ribbon everybody needs a trophy children understand it's a competition and even though it's disappointing they process it so it, you're not teaching them anything by giving them trophies and ribbons you know if I had a child and they were in a competition and things didn't work out I take them to Baskin and Robbins, or let them choose. You know, <clears throat> and a lot of stupid conversation is had. Well, you're conditioning the child to de become dependent on sugar when things don't work out. Please shut up. You have the slightest idea what you're talking about, so just shut up. Everything is balanced in life, and if you teach your children balance. If you teach them health, if you teach them vegetables and fruits and chicken and fish and water versus Coca-Cola, now and then 
it's okay to celebrate life with a treat. Okay? So, you're going to start, <clears throat> and you're going to start thinking differently. And instead of being there, overwhelmed by emotions, you're going to start incorporating fun. That's the, that's right there is the key. When you are hurting, find some comedy. Find some music you like. Find that dopey friend that makes you laugh. You know, there's a family member that's put up with you no matter what you've done. And, and that's another thing. Don't become a pest to your friends and family members. A lot of this has to be us. A lot of this, we have to work through it. And we have to stop being negative. Start being positive. Understanding our cycle of pain and suffering. And incorporating fun instead of just sitting there and suffering. This is not... I am not accusing you of anything. I'm trying to give you helpful information... So you'll be able to change your thoughts, relax, manage your emotions in a healthy manner, and incorporate healthy fun. Think positive. Focus on what's beautiful in life, what's good, what's decent. Uh, again, a lot of music is garbage. A lot of television and movies is garbage. You have to decide. I have, for some odd reason started watching Hallmark movies and it, it's an enjoyable experience when there's no cursing when there's no nudity when there's no vulgarity corruption perversion name it it's just a pleasant movie to watch and it's more enjoyable than that garbage I used to watch now now comes the real substance of this discussion and if you're going to feel overwhelmed, take time to relax, stop the video, and when you feel calm, then continue. What happens to a person who experiences severe trauma? The science tells us that we, try, that we shut down, that we enter into a state of shock, where we try not to think or feel because it's so overwhelming and we can't deal with the pain and suffering. When you're at war, you are constantly facing death. You're constantly facing fear of death. And that trauma can be severe trauma. And it can leave you with a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to, let me see if I can manage it here. You won't see it. I said I was going to do this. <coughs> well, I'm not. I said I wasn't going to do it, so I'm not going to do it. Um, symptomology. Inability to sleep. Inability to enjoy meals. Withdrawing socially from people. Having nightmares. Um, panic attacks. Pain and suffering. Um, overwhelming anxiety. Um reoccurring thoughts of a traumatic event or symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Depression, you should know what symptoms of depression are and symptoms of anxiety are. Okay, And what is occurring is we're trying to keep this monster in our head so it doesn't escape because we believe it. if it escapes it will take our life. And by that I mean our fears, our pain, our depression and again if this is too much and it's overwhelming stop the video a couple of breaths relax take it easy find something fun to do maybe sit there quietly and drink a glass of ice cold iced tea just relax I believe in you I know that you have all the mental processes skills to help yourself. And I know you don't want to be there. And I know you have that tug of war where you just want to be what you consider a normal person, free of pain and suffering, but you try to do something and it may work out worse 
and it may compound the challenge. It's not an impossible challenge. It is something that you're more than capable of doing. And you should do it. It was unfair. It was not just. There was no justice in what occurred to you. However, you can spend the rest of your life reliving the trauma or you can focus on yourself and your desire to want to live a pain-free life, a life with no suffering, with no hurt, and realize that what we do with our thoughts causes us the majority of the pain. That's why we need to start thinking different, being engaged in different things. I've had people tell me, you don't understand. Excuse me, don't mean to be rude, but I gotta drink something or start coughing. I have people who have come back from Iraq, in El Paso, Texas, there's a military base called Fort Bliss, who have said, in a very angry voice, you've never been to war. You're absolutely right, 100%, I've never been to war. <clears throat> but it's in our mind. It isn't in your neighbor's mind. It isn't in your dog or cat's mind. It's in your mind. We decide what we want to pay attention to. We decide how we define a specific package of information. We do, we do that. Granted, we're taught by a culture that this should be this and that should be that. And <clears throat> for the most part, we function under what it, our culture teaches us, whether it's our family group. Now it appears that the culture of television and movies and music and internet is, is um, educating individuals. That's where most people are getting their personal education from, is from the media. And the media is rather negative. And I can tell you there is a way. It's very simplistic. Instead of being overwhelmed by the emotions that come from the traumatic event, we can start focusing on what's fun. We can start focusing on what's good. We can start focusing on what's decent. We can start being positive. We can start enjoying life. Little by little, small steps. To try to do everything all at once, it's, a, it's gonna overwhelm you and discourage you. I've only been doing this for 23 minutes. I thought it'd be a longer discussion, but it, it's that simple. Instead of Instead of focusing on the event, you can choose to be optimistic, hopeful, and realistic. You can choose to enjoy the good things of life, such as friends, family, good meals, good music, good literature, comedy, romance, recreation, and anything else. And you can choose to start thinking, organizing, planning, and acting, and you will see every, every goal that you accomplish you will grow in confidence and your self-esteem will improve. This is the answer to post-traumatic stress disorder, to depression, to anxiety-based disorders. Um, I guess I could read off a, a list of them. I have the books, but for the most part, therein lies the problem. Now, some things happen. And yes, some people unfortunately Unfortunately, their bodies are their own worst enemies, the chemical imbalance in the brain. But even with that, <coughs> we can relax. And when we start to feel the, the sensations of pain and suffering, we can incorporate fun into our lives. We can do something other than hurt. We can listen to music we can enjoy. We can call up a friend or, or go visit a friend that whose company we enjoy. Hang out with family. Go take a bicycle ride. 
watch a movie that may interest us. See, we're doing it all wrong. And the worst part about it is the more that we don't want to be hurting, the more we make ourselves hurt. And it is a big problem in our society that a lot of people think that they're smarter than everybody else and they don't have to listen to anyone. That's another obstacle. That's delicious. So, start learning to relax. Start learning to deal with, manage those overwhelming emotions. I didn't talk that much about emotional management and what comes from rape, combat, child abuse, or any other form of severe trauma are emotions. My simple rules for emotional management what am I feeling? And why am I feeling it? If it's something under my control where I can change my negative thoughts to positive thoughts, I need to start working on that. If it's something that somebody's doing to me, <coughs> I need to decide if I'm going to let them by personalizing their attacks. Or am I going to continue to function on what's fun and decent in life? And sometimes we just have to say, this person is not in my best interest. I'm going to stay away from this person. Sometimes we have to say that. We may not like it. It may hurt to know that we have to stay away from a father, a mother, a brother, a sister. Maybe even someone we consider a friend. Maybe somebody will see every day at work, which may compound it. But are we, is our goal to have health, good health, good mental health? Good mental health is freedom from pain and suffering plus fun. So a lot of people think, well, if I can just stop hurting, everything will be okay. No, you'll stop hurting, but you need to be living life. You need to go into the park, you need to go into the movies, hanging out with friends, hanging out with family, reading good books. See, so we will stop hurting, but we also have to pursue life. I live my life. Other people wouldn't enjoy the way I live my life. They, they think they need to spend $10,000 to spend the summer in California. Excuse me. Um, well, I should say, excuse me, Friday. I thought about traveling, but it wouldn't be to go see museums. It'd be to go see rivers, mountains. So everybody has their own, you know, idea of canoeing, who scale mountains. And the most part, <coughs> we like to laugh at people. And we shouldn't, we should be more personally focused and not so interest in our neighbor's stuff. We shouldn't worry about our neighbor's car or our neighbor's hair or our neighbor's home. We should worry, our car. We should worry about our car. I, I just every, every day off, I go through my taxi, check the oil, check the water, check the tires. Every, and I'll do this as I'm working also, but every day off, I go through it, see what's been left on the floor by customers. Very good at leaving wrappers and beverage things. And the point being is we should focus on ourselves, on our home. Let's not worry about our fat neighbor. Let's worry about our fat self and live a healthy life. So I think I'm done. I don't need three hours. Be your own best friend. Choose to start taking care of yourself. Choose to start eating healthy meals, sleeping, forcing yourself to sleep the necessary eight hours that you need to sleep. Instead of giving in to the pain and suffering, relax, practice relaxation, and incorporate fun in your life. Instead of hurting, listen to music you enjoy. Watch something healthy. Christian television, Christian media helps me a lot. And like I said, there are, other than the garbage, you can find um, YouTube is where I find a lot of these Hallmark movies. Uh, 
Christmas is coming. There'll be a lot of Christmas movies. and But it's not, you know, murder and explosions and uh, foul language and nudity and sex. <clears throat> and you don't realize that you're poisoning yourself with these images. You're going to have a balanced life. You can have the greatest sex you've ever had, you've ever wanted, you thought you'd never get from your spouse. We have a lot of reports of, of, of uh, on overweight people. It's because we're not mentally healthy. We're not happy. We're not incorporating fun in our lives. We're medicating our depression. And it's possible to change to be positive, to be optimistic, to be healthy, no matter what the trauma is. Here's that fear, and here's the wall that we have put up in front of it. And this wall is pain and suffering. This is how we're dealing with this fear, pain and suffering, right here, and negativity. But if we open the door to positive ideas, healthy ideas, fun ideas. If we start believing that we can dance, that we can sing, that we can play again and do it. See, we're obsessed on this and we put up a wall because we can't let it out. It's going to kill us. That's what we're convinced. But if we start thinking on something else, negative or positive pain suffering or fun taking care of ourselves or living a destructive life because we believe we cannot deal with the pain and suffering we can't deal with the hurt it's a choice and i'm repeating myself and i don't believe in repeating myself You have to believe in yourself, you have to be kind to yourself, and you have to start living a different life, a more optimistic, hopeful, realistic, healthy, realistic, where we appreciate what we have and we enjoy what we have. And we start looking at life and enjoying what's in life. If you want to have a Christian music party, you want to crank up the Christian music in your home, go for it. Dance. Dance to your heart's content. Because being obsessed on the trauma is never going to get you to help. All those questions you want answered, you're going to answer them. But you will have forgotten how to have fun. That's the big deal here. Fun, enjoyment, healthy pleasure is the answer to pain and suffering. And we have to choose that. And it doesn't mean we take our eyes off life. It doesn't mean we stop being irresponsible. We take care of areas that needs to be taken care of life. We make sure the money's in the bank, the bills are paid. We're eating healthy food. Having fun doesn't mean that we become irresponsible. It just means we, we realize that the way to have a mentally healthy life is to have a life where we incorporate fun. That's what God wants. He doesn't want you hurting. He wants you to have fun. So I, I think that's it. There is nothing more that I can add to this. I'm just going to scroll up here to the beginning and put up my, let me see here. How do I do this? Uh huh. Now I want to get my picture up here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep, that's it. I hope it's helped. And again, you have everything you need to stop hurting, to start enjoying life, to start having a happy, pleasant life. You feel you're bored in your marriage? Find some healthy, fun ideas to do. You don't have to discuss everything. That's one of the one of the. I'm going to add a little more to this. One of the things that's always bugged me is this this need for talking. Maybe we need to start doing. Start riding bicycles. 
going out fishing, going to the zoo. I've never seen the zoo of Alpha. I mean, I've passed through the zoo, I've never gone into the zoo. There was, when I was in finishing up my degree, disclosure. And I am going to do a video on, on the need for, well, for the need for men to understand the emotional needs of women and for women to understand how to have a healthy, healthy emotional needs. And a lot of it comes from we're not doing stuff, other stuff. We're being a pest to our spouses because we're not listening to music and we're not reading books and we're not hanging out with friends and we're not hanging out with family. There has to be a balance in life. I think that, that'll be the last thing that I will add to it. Sure, other things will come up and as other things come into my mind, I will do videos on that. Thank you for listening and I wish you well.